Okay, okay, okay. We got a lot to talk about today. We got a lot to talk about today. Are y'all ready? Y'all not ready. Y'all are not ready for about what we're about to talk about, right? So, oh my gosh, I can't even believe I'm talking about this. So, today what we're going to be talking about... It, it, hold on. How do we feel about that? Today, what we're going to be talking about is... What are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the black community and homophobia. Because I think it's time that we've had this discussion. We need to talk about why black people do not like gay people. Why is that? What's the issue? What's the problem? Now, I want you to understand that coming from a bisexual man such as myself, this is going to be a very, very, very interesting episode. And you know what? I'm okay with that. We've made, we've, we're here. We're queer. So people just got to get over it. Last end of the story. You don't have to. You No, not you don't. You have to accept it. You have to learn to support it. Or you won't be accepted. And you won't be loved and supported. So it's up to you as an individual person in our society to decide whether or not you want to be a good person towards other people. You get to make that decision. But just know that whatever decision you make has a consequence. You are going to have backlash. If you don't want that backlash, you either need to rethink your decision or stand firmer in your decision and accept the criticism. Period. Period. Okay. Boom. That was hot. Wow. We just got into a whole rant and I'm not even like five minutes in, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Frack. Frackle, dackle, freckle, mackle, smackle. Because I think I'm going to have a lot of family watching this. I got a feeling I am. So, let's talk about it. But before we get into it, the first thing that I wanted to say was the black community is not the only community that deals with homophobia this strong. It's really not. While you do have a lot of accepting and open black people, you also have a lot of not accepting and not open black people. Just like with Latinx people. Just like with white people, just like with the Asian community, just like with the, what is it, European community. Like, all those different groups of people are strong, stand strongly in their faith of disliking homophobia for whatever reason, right? For like, whatever reason it is. I don't understand it. I don't get it. But whatever reason that they may or may not have that that that's why right <clears throat> so let's talk about it that was the first point black people are not the only people black churches are not the only churches but i want you to know that we are going to be talking a lot about religion throughout this podcast and if let, let's start out by saying this if your religion does not focus on love God's most precious and treasured gift, we're not talking about the same religion. I want to get that out of the way. If your religion doesn't include an unapologetic love for everybody you meet, we're not talking about the same religion. No matter what it is, we're not talking about it. Because the religion that I'm talking about is... From a God that loves everybody and everybody that he's made. So, if that's not what you believe, you can just click off right now. This is not the video for you. Let me just tell you. Not the video for you. If you believe that God has any bigotry or bias towards anyone, this is not the video for you. And you should leave. You're not welcome. Thank you for clicking on the video. Thank you for helping my engagement. If you're going to leave a dislike, thank you for helping my engagement. If you're going to leave a nasty comment, thank you for helping with my engagement. I appreciate it, but this is not the video for you. So now that we've determined that this is not the video for you, if you decide to go forward, it's at your own merit. 
at you are moving forward in this discussion acknowledging that you either have to come in with an open mind or believe what i believe that's it that's all i have to say if you can't come into this video with that in mind don't come in we don't need you here thank you thank you bye bye all right now that all the non bigoted annoying homophobic people out there are gone let's Chad, <laughs> like let's get right into it now okay before we get right into it let's do hold on i'll be right back we're gonna do we are gonna do the artist showcase yes 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 the artist showcase yes, 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 yes. we're gonna do an artist showcase so who are we gonna do? I actually have. I've been wanting to do this guy since I heard his new song. So we're gonna do. Sorry, I gotta open back up my notebook. Okay. We are going. Our, the artist for this week that we are choosing is. Dun 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 dun. One, the one called King. One King. He is. The, he, he's amazing, right? So, this is the song that we're going to do. Roll the clip. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Sally sold she south by the seashore. Yeah. 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 Bitch, I'm the sheep. I merch. Uh, talking that sheep. Merch. Uh, aim at your head. Lurch. So that was Merch It by The One Called King. One King. He is an amazing artist. And I'm going to need you, after you're done watching this video, the last week's video, and the week before that's video, you're going to have to go down, click that link, and listen to that song. Leave a comment on that song. Like that song on SoundCloud. So yes, yes, he is amazing. I really want you guys to go check him out. Um, yeah, he's really good. So let's talk about black homophobia. Black homophobia. Okay. So I already said this, but black churches are not the only source and root of homophobia. Can we talk about it? Ooh, I'm sorry. Can we talk about it? Because there are plenty of churches out there who have homophobic beliefs and or tendencies. So let's, let's not just leave it to the black people being homophobes. That's not it. Right? So, people who their homophobia is rooted in, like, religion or religious beliefs, they have three different roots to like these are three different things that they either all be they believe them all or they just believe one or maybe two but these are th the top three the top three different roots of homophobia right so the first one is you got your religious beliefs can we talk about it can we talk about it black people are so strong in their faith and religion and it's for valid reasons, right? For valid reasons, black people throughout history have found comfort in the Bible, in in the songs, the hymns, the teachings, the stories. What are they? The uh, si not syllables. Oh Lord, is this syllable? Y'all know what I'm saying? Like the song, the songs, the stories, the 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 guide through life. Because black people have had to have that journey of self realization in that journey of real hardship that you needed to be able to look towards something to have a faith in something that gets you to keep going that's how black people have been historically so strong is because of religion we can't diss that we can't set that on the table and ignore it because religion is plays a really big role in the history of black people in the culture of black people what black people believe as a community has their moral from religion and I mean it's for no reason it's 
it's a faith. It's a belief. It's real. Like, you can believe in it. But it's different when that religious belief starts breeding hatred. Like, that's an, that's an issue, right? We have to discuss that. And then what happened was, they. this is what I wrote down. This is what I wrote down in my notes. I'm going to say it, and then we're going to expand on it, right? Black people throughout history have found comfort in the Bible through the absolute literalness of the Bible. Believing the stories as they should be lived out through life. Which is unrealistic, but, like, I understand. Black people were conditioned to find refuge and freedom in the literalness of Scripture. And I also wrote, why would they waver on sexuality if they believe everything else is real? So, that, what, that's what I said. Basically, I said what I said. Black people throughout the years have found comfort and refuge and freedom and wholeness and a serenity, a peace of movement in the church and religion and the Bible. And through that literalness, through the verbiage of the Bible, you should be living that way. Yes, you should be living in a way that is honorable to both you and God because you should believe how God believes. So it should be towards you and God. But the Bible, you also have to acknowledge, was written with the belief systems of people from that time. There were not nearly enough science and in, in physicalness and tangibleness to attach to God to be able to believe this so wholeheartedly today because back then what did they know not much what do we know now we know about different genes about different different ways that humans are made and different things in their brain that we only notice in gay people there is a magicness in gay people that people just don't understand because you're so rooted in these hatred and and this hatred and these bigoted thoughts that you can't escape around it for what reason we don't know it's 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 bigotry at its finest and even when you think about it the black people are saying the exact same things about gay people that white people were saying about black people. And it's honestly is sad looking on it. And they don't even understand what's going on. They don't even understand what they're doing wrong. And this is the reason that I believe that our community can't get ahead. Because you're too busy looking at what the people over there are doing when you need to be focused on yourself. Because if you were focused on yourself, you wouldn't be worried about who, what, who somebody was sleeping with. That's none of your business. And that's on what, ladies and gentlemen? Period, poo. Okay, now this next one, I'ma read it and then I'ma expand expand again because this is a this is a this is a doozy. And I did my research. If y'all want me to link the books that I was reading down below, I'll link them down below because I think some people need to read them because you're homophobic bigots. But yeah. The um, I said historical sexual exploitation. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Don't hear me out. Calm down. Calm down, ma'am. The media's display of wildly racist and insensitive stereotypes that picture black people in as the mammy, the Sambo, the Jezebel. And then have been moved to modern entertainment as the welfare ghetto, the sexually promiscuous black guy, giving, giving the image that black people are lusting and promiscuous. And, you know, so in, as a means of protection, black culture in the late 90s started a, oh, okay, hold on. I read that wrong. So as a means of protection, black cultures in the late 20s started assimilating with what came the Calvinistic missionary one man, one woman sex. Now, let me explain because I don't think I gave enough backstory when I was writing this. What happened is prior to like before the Harlem Renaissance, 
in the middle to upper middle to lower class it was acceptable to have people around you who were gay it wasn't always frowned upon it was acceptable to have gay people in your quarters in your homes in your apartment buildings at your stores as your manager it was that was acceptable because nobody thought of it as anything until until now hear me out once poor communities started having to integrate with more wealthy white communities they realize that white people believe in this religion so wholeheartedly that they have to start assimilating and setting on these similar belief patterns so after the harlem renaissance there was no more unity it was separation because the religion had creeped in from the white people at the time which i know it it sounds real like fucking i mean real like hotep and like oh the white people the white man and uh, yeah and they didn't want the black people together so they divided them no but once you wanted that integration and you realize that white people do not see gay as a good thing you don't see gay as a good thing and i mean it's understandable because at that time you just wanted to be part of you wanted to be one you want so if you had to adapt their beliefs you would adapt their beliefs right man so, now this is post the Harlem Renaissance, right? After the Renaissance, you started to notice that the communities that once bonded over their unique differences break up. And as black people wanted to assimilate and move more into whiteness and white spaces, they had to align themselves with more whiteness, the religion, the Calvinism, the Christianity. And that was leading to an intense homophobia in the community. That's true. I believe that. 100%. I believe it. I believe it. 100%. Yeah. Now, we're not going to really dive too much into black masculinity and how the fragility of masculinity in the black community have led to this homophobia that we see today through black men. But we won't talk about it too much. Whew. So, in joining this new wave, we quickly realize that in the white male western traditional society, femininity connotes or connects to or associates with weakness. So, black men and black masculinity was constructed and built in a way that was meant to be hyper-masculine and toxically masculine so you can be proven your masculinity, which led to more stereotypes like the, you know, angry black man or the aggressor or the aggressive black man, but we won't talk about that. We were trying so hard to fit in that we fucked everything up, but it's not even our fault. It's the white guy's fault, but we can't acknowledge that, right? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I get it. Mm. So, you know, it's the old tale of men who believe that in order to be a man, you're allowed to bully, be misogynistic or gay bash. And it's to legitimize, legitimize your masculinity for your everything else, you know. Now, back to everything that ties back to religion and Calvinism. Right. OK, let's talk about it. What is Calvinism? I looked it up. Here's a Google definition. Putting it up on the screen. Calvinism is the Protestant theological system of John Calvin and his successors, which develops Luther's doctrine of justification by faith alone and embraces the grace of God in the doctrine of the predestination. So they believe you're, it's already been decided whether or not you are going to heaven or hell. Which this part confuses me, right? Because it's already been decided if you are or are not going to heaven or hell. And that's not something that you have to live out through your life considering with every decision that you make. If it's something that's predestined, then why, why on God's green earth would he not predestined somebody that's gay because if you really think about it if god knows everything he would have known this person was going to be gay he already knows their life he has a map of it so why i don't understand i don't know i don't understand maybe that belief system is just flawed and that's why i don't understand it but i think that it's real problematic that we as a community continue to perpetuate this hate that's completely unnecessary 
and unwarranted just because we want to fit into whiteness and white culture. If we as a community could start accepting gay people as they really are, we could realize that there's so much magic and creativity and innovation and inner energy in the gay culture. We the gay okay, gay gay people and black women trendsetters we do they we do everything we set trends we set goals we set fads we set everything from everything from our hair to our shoes is set by black men that are or are sort of homosexual or black women they set the tone for our culture that we cling on to so tightly but we don't want to acknowledge that I don't I don't understand. I really don't. It's it's a it's a hard pill to swallow as the old folks may say, the boomers. But I do think we are coming to a more accepting part of our society. It's it's getting there. I think with Dwayne Wade coming out, you know, he did that. But then you still got people like, what is it, T.I.? Is it T.I. or Tyga? It's T.I. He, like, taking his daughter to the doctor, taking her hymen. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Black culture has so much more growth to go through. It's crazy. But also, we've gone through so much growth. Like, I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm shitting on black people because it all stems from whiteness and white culture, but it's still... It upsets me. What did the people say? It grinds my gears. Grinds my gears. Woo child. So yeah, that's how I'm feeling today. Um thanks for coming to the podcast. What I'm sorry, I've been after that rant, I'm like kinda tired. I enjoyed us. We had a good time on the Isaiah Markell podcast. We're going to have a full 30-minute episode on Wednesday. I promise we'll have it on Wednesday. So, yeah. Mm, We'll have that on Wednesday. I don't know if I'm going to do another Friday upload next week. It depends on how busy the week is. Um, We'll see. So, yeah, I'm I'm having fun. I'm really having fun doing my podcast. I want to thank everybody that's watching the Leah Marie, Le, oh, ah, rah, the Leah Marie Johnson podcast is doing so well. I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying it. Um, and then the one I did last week, or no, yesterday, a couple of days ago on Wednesday, that one is doing really well, too. I'm really glad you guys are liking my podcast. I'm going to keep doing them, of course. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for being with me. Like, we, we're we doing big things. 2020, big things popping, little things stopping. Period. So, thank you for joining, and I hope you have a great one. Bye-bye. Boom. 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 Boom.